Hi hey everyone! This week's topic is sampling and sampling plans. So we figured out here's how we take a sample and now we're going to figure out all right how many samples do we need to take to make sure that we have enough of a group that's representative of our population. And so how we do that is we look at our operating characteristics curve. Now you can create those by hand and there are several tables of the Poisson distribution that will give you the information you need to create those by hand. But you can also use Excel to do it. So let's take a look at how to do that. Here is a Excel sheet that is set up to create an OC curve. So right here I have my sample size N, I have C, my acceptance criteria. So here I'm taking 50 samples, 50 units, and I am saying, all right, none of those samples can have any kind of defect in it. I'm going to reject if I have anything that shows up as non-conforming. So to start off, first we need our percent non-conforming in the population, or P0. Here I have it as a fraction. So I'm starting at 0, and I'm going up stepwise and here is where my step is, 0 0.002 or 0.2%. And so what I've done here, so I don't have to type all these numbers over and over if I decide to change my step size because sometimes that can affect how your OC curve shows up. I said, all right, I want the cell above me, A4, plus my step. And so if you just do F1 alone, you just type F and then 1, and then say OK, and then you drag down, you're not going to be selecting the right cell. You'll start moving to F2 and then F3. And so what this little dollar sign is, is it locks my row. And so now my row is not going to move. So if I was to drag down, you can see F1 doesn't change, even though the cell in the A column is changing. So that's just a little trick there to lock your cell in place if you need to and not have it changing around um, so you don't have to go and overtype everything. Okay, so that's P0, percent non-conforming conforming in the population or here fraction non-conforming. You can do it either way, but what I need is fraction non-conformulation when I put in a formula in a minute, so I kept it as fraction. NP0 is your sample size, and here I've locked C1, so it's not going to change when I drag down, times my non-conforming in the population. So that is literally N times P0. It is not another variable, it's just two variables multiplied together. So that's that column. Now, what I want to do is calculate the probability of acceptance, and I can do that in Excel using the Poisson distribution function. So if you start typing the word Poisson, there it is. So you can see there's a distribution function here. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to come up with this. So you can see if you have your cursor between the parentheses, you have x, mean, and cumulative. So let's go through those one by one. X is your acceptance criteria. So I'm going to put that in here. Comes up with C2. Now I'm going to drag down, and I don't want C2 to change off of C2, so I'm going to put that dollar sign in there to lock my row in place. Okay, there's my first value. My mean, that is NP0 here. So I'm going to put that, and I'm not going to change the way that shows up because when I pull down, I want that value to change. So I get a curve instead of a constant value. Finally, we come to the cumulative. This is a true-false thing. And so if I type in true here, it's going to return the cumulative distribution for that. And so basically what that means is everything from 0 to that particular value. All those values added together. If I type false, it's just the value at that particular point. So this is a single acceptance curve that we're making here. And so that means that we want the cumulative values. So we have everything we need. 
There we go. Our probability of acceptance when there is zero non-conforming in the population is one or 100%. And if you think about it, that makes complete sense because any sample you take is going to have no defects in it. So you're always going to accept your sample. All right. But we never have populations with no defects. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this down. So what I did was I just held on to the lower right corner, pulled down. That will autofill all of these values. So if we scroll back up, we can see, because I had this chart set up ahead of time, here we go. We have our OC curve right here. And this is a pretty steep curve because C is equal to zero. And so you may be thinking, well, why do I have to bother with all these separate cells and the dollar signs and all that stuff? It's because if you want to change your OC curve, you can do it very, very quickly. So let's say my supervisor said, you know what? That acceptance criteria is too strict. Let's have two or fewer. Okay, so there we go. My curve changes instantly, and I know all the calculations are right because I didn't touch the calculations. I just changed this value. Notice that right here our curve only goes down to about 0.21. I say, well, okay, I need a bigger step size because I want to see all the way down this curve. So if I change this to 0 0.0025, that will update my p0 values here, which updates my np0 values, which updates my probability acceptance, and now I have a longer curve. So those are just a couple of quick things you can do to kind of play with the shape of your curve and see what you get, see what your probability of acceptance is and under different scenarios. And in general, this is how to use Excel to make an OC curve. This is a single acceptance curve again. Double acceptance curve have a few more steps, so I will do that in a separate video, which will come out in at most a couple more days, so you can see how to make those in Excel. But in the meantime, have fun trying this out, and let me know if you have any questions.